Hey there, I'm estate planning attorney Paul Rambley, and in this video, I'm going to go over the legal aspects of securing your animals uninterrupted care in the event of the unexpected. So it's been estimated that more than 60% of U.S. households have a pet. My family actually has two dogs, Max and Chloe. In fact, if you're like my family and are as passionate about your pets as we are, go ahead and put in the comments below how your pet's status is equivalent to, or maybe even greater than, a family member. And as far as providing for your pets as part of your estate plan, people take one of two approaches. The first is what I call the informal approach. People might say, I'm probably going to outlive my pets, but even if I don't outlive my pets, I know that my children or beneficiaries will decide how to best take care of my pets, so there's no need to formally create a pet trust in my estate legal documents. That's what I'd say the majority of people do. The second approach is to create a pet trust. The concept of pet trusts has been around now for two to three decades, and pet trusts have received their fair share of press. Perhaps the most famous pet trust of all was the one created by businesswoman Leona Helmsley, who owned a real estate and hotel empire in New York City. Leona, in her last will and testament, provided that upon her death, $12 million was to go into a trust for her dog named Trouble. As a side note, this $12 million bequest to Trouble's trust was later reduced by a judge to $2 million. Poor Trouble. But if it is important to you how to control your pet or pets, or how to control how your pet or pets will be cared for in the event of your death, you may want to consider setting up a pet trust as part of your overall estate plan. Here are six decisions that you will be required to make when you set up a pet trust. Number one, who will the pet trust be for? Are you going to name the pet that it is for or simply state that the pet trust is for any pets you have when you pass away? And if you name a specific pet, should the pet trust beneficiaries include the offspring of the named pet? Number two, what is the amount of money you will be leaving to the pet trust from your estate? Is it $10,000? Is it $50,000? Is it $100,000? Or in the case of Leona Helmsley, Helmsley, $12 million? Number three, who will be the pet trust trustee? You should probably have a conversation with the person you are naming to be the pet trust trustee to ensure that they are willing to accept the role. And while you're at it, you may want to designate an alternate trustee of the pet trust. Number four, who will be the caretaker of the pet or pets? This may or may not be the same person that is the trustee of the pet trust, or you could designate a trustee to handle the funds in the pet trust and name another person to be the pet caretaker. And again, not a bad idea to name an alternate pet caretaker. Number five, do you want to provide compensation to the pet caretaker? Being a good pet caretaker is a lot of work. Number six, who will the remainder beneficiary be of the pet trust? In other words, when the pets pass away, who will receive any funds that remain in the pet trust account? Or in the alternative, you may want to designate a charity, perhaps an animal charity or any other charity, as the remainder beneficiary of your pet trust. So you need to ask yourself, will my pets be well cared for by my survivors, even if I make no mention of the pets in my estate plan? Or does it make good sense to create a formal pet trust in my estate planning legal documents to ensure that funds from my estate will be set aside for my pets and to ensure that the right people will have the legal authority to care for and provide a good home for my pets. Okay, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If you got any good pet stories, put them in the comments below. We'd all love to read them. Y'all take care and have a great day.